a stunning picture is not only about a perfect moment and a perfect environment. It is also about how well you are at the basics of a camera. Getting the exposure right is the key to every breathtaking image, and exposure is all about juggling through the exposure triangle. In this video, we are going to discuss how to get the perfect exposure using the exposure triangle so that every image you click becomes a masterpiece. So get, set, and click. There are three pillars of photography that are popularly known as the exposure triangle. They are the ISO, aperture, and shutter speed. All these three elements control the exposure of your image, and you might have to adjust them all at once to get the right exposure. So let's understand how to use each of them in your photography. Let's start with the ISO. ISO controls the luminosity of your image. You can digitally brighten or darken the image with ISO. Many also call it fake light for this reason. Let me give you an example to make it even more clear. If you have a smartphone, you are probably aware of how you can adjust the light of the screen. There is a bar that lets you brighten or darken your phone screen. The ISO in a camera does exactly the same. You can brighten your image regardless of daytime or nighttime. Sounds great, right? Every time you have a lesser amount of light, you just have to crank your ISO up. Well, things are not that easy as it seems. Increasing the ISO also increases noise in the image. So, the most widely accepted rule is, you will always want to shoot at your minimum ISO range to keep your image from being noisy and grainy. If you have observed your camera carefully, you might have found a camera sensor and a shutter in front of it, restricting light from entering the sensor. When you click a photo, the shutter flips and makes way for light to fall on the sensor. This is how your camera sees the world you want to capture. Now about the shutter speed, it's the time duration your sensor is exposed to the environment. Your photo is basically the light that goes into the sensor between the time the camera shutter opens and closes. The click sound we hear while capturing an image is basically the sound of the shutter opening and closing. Now the speed of the shutter controls the amount of light entering the sensor. A very fast shutter speed opens and closes the shutter almost instantly and lets a very little amount of light fall on the sensor, resulting in a darker image. On the other hand, a slower shutter speed lets an adequate amount of light enter the sensor and thus resulting in a brighter image. If you are planning to go for a very slow shutter speed to brighten your image, you first need to know the downside of a slower shutter. A slower shutter speed causes motion blur. So if you are shooting a fast-paced scenario like a flying bird, with a slower shutter speed, you might end up getting a blurry image of the bird and ruin the image. In this case, you need a faster shutter speed to eliminate motion blur. There is a rule of thumb for shutter speed. It says, always double up the shutter speed of your frame rate. This will give you a natural looking shot. So if you are shooting at 24 frames per second, make sure the shutter speed is at least 1 by 48 or 50 if your camera only allows increments of 10. Moving on to the last pillar of the exposure triangle, the aperture. The aperture is the gateway of the lens that lets light enter into the lens and falls on the sensor. It is much like the pupil of our eye. Just like the pupil gets larger or shorter, the aperture can also be wide open to let more light into the sensor or narrower to let less light into the sensor. So like the two other pillars described below, the aperture also lets you brighten or darken your image without touching the ISO or shutter speed. Aperture is usually measured in F number. And just like shutter speed and ISO, tweaking the aperture also has an impact on some other traits of an image besides the exposure, and that is depth of field. If you let more light into the lens, 
and a wide open aperture, it will focus on only a particular subject and everything else in the background get blurry. This is called a shallow depth of field. On the other hand, if aperture is narrower, not only will it make the image darker, but also everything in the image comes in focus and you don't get the bokeh effect. Now we know that ISO shutter speed and aperture impact the exposure of an image. But these three also impact other factors of your image. For example, ISO comes with noise and grain, shutter speed causes motion blur, and aperture influences the depth of field. So how can you use these three factors to get the right exposure while keeping other settings in check? Let's do it on a test project. We are going to shoot a still object and the camera is set on a tripod. Now let's first decide what we want from this image. We want a picture with the right exposure and a nice background blur. First, we need to reduce the ISO. I am going to reduce it to the minimum, which is 100. Let's tweak the aperture of the camera to get the right shallow depth of field. Now it's time to set the shutter speed. As you can see, we are still overexposed, so we need to increase the shutter speed. So as you can see, after speeding up the shutter speed, that we are at the right exposure. Though there are many other issues, like white balancing and others, at least you are one step ahead of shooting a good photo. So that was all about the exposure triangle. Hope you get a comprehensive idea about the exposure triangle now. But there are more factors when capturing a perfect photo, such as frame rates, white balance, and so on. If you want to learn more about those topics, let us know in the comment section.